have mixed emotions. Uh, making this is our 20th season, my family, and and when we made the decision that when now is the time to to do something else. It was the right decision, but one of the most difficult decisions that we've ever made. And I've struggled with it all year. And uh, but you know everybody has been really great, and I've continued to help Ned about all Ned can stand to be helped. So <laughs> and I've, I've made sure that I really enjoyed this last year. But it's the whole thing is kind of bittersweet. The fans are fantastic. You know they are so congratulatory and so nice. These these are the best fans in, in all of baseball, you know, and I've been everywhere else, so I can judge that. But it's been great, but I'm going to really miss it. Mr. Glass, think about going back 20 years ago when you took over this club. And now, 20 years later, this club is in so much better situation and position than when you took over. What would you say to the new ownership group was the most important thing that you did, and what do they? What what would you say is good advice for them? Well, the, the the best thing they can do is, is I, I think, do it the same way that we did it. I think that's the way the small markets have to do it. Small markets are somewhat disadvantaged, but you can do it if you if you draft well, if you develop your players well, and if you put them together in the farm system and, and bring them up. And, and But it, it doesn't have to happen just once ever in, in a while. Talking to Dayton, uh, he has me convinced that we can bring this group up and then sustain success. But but you you have to have this obsession to win. Uh, who, whoever said it it doesn't matter whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game was a loser. I'll tell you. Uh, it, it, it's all about winning. And I told the players yesterday that I, I reminded them of the of the Houston game, the elimination game in 15 we're down four runs going into the eighth inning and that team they didn't just say i'm going to to play really hard and try to win they they had this i refuse to lose attitude and they and they kept that all season and they had it in that game and they had it in the world series they came from behind over and over because they just refused to lose and if you can bring players up who, who who aren't just happy to be here but who really want to play and to win then, then you've got something that you can sustain for a long time and you obviously had a tremendous career at Walmart leading you know a, a an organization to the top and now you switch gears and you're leading a baseball team now how different was, was that process it sounds like you put a lot of the of what you learn in business uh, to work here in baseball yeah, you know, you, you do everything through people. Uh, if, if if we all got paid on what we individually could produce, none of us would be worth very much. But if we can manifest our knowledge and our talents and, and, and so forth through other people, then you can win. And, and that applies to, to professional sports. It applies to the business world. You know, you've got to do it through people. Well, I think one of the things that stands out to me, certainly in, in my 12 years here in Monty, it goes way back for you, is the quality of people you have had. And there have been so many celebrations about that. You know, giving out all those championship rings wasn't so much, in my mind, about having this beautiful, expensive piece of jewelry. It was about including people. It was about rewarding people, no matter what their job was. How much satisfaction have you taken in seeing people succeed here, and not just in the organization, but seeing people take joy in this in Kansas City and throughout the region. Yeah, I tell you, that that's really what it's all about. And you know, it, it's like in the World Series where we took the, the people who worked in the office, we took everybody that wanted to go to the World Series because they're all a part of it. I mean, even though they're not down on the field playing, they are supportive and, and they help make this happen. And and I think that, that it we've, we've sort of, it's a cliche I know about talking about family and things, but we've been one big family here at, at the Royals and, and our people feel that way. And that's why we're able to attract the best people and that's why we have the best organization in, in all of baseball. You know, I, I tell people all the time, and I think I think fans that don't know you, haven't had the chance to meet you, have, have really seen, w with you stepping up during the World Series, they've seen you around more. You're, you're a guy that's very happy being under the radar, and you don't need to be front and center. But we all that are around you every day know how much you love 
the sport of baseball, have since you were a little kid. What is it about this game that you love so much? Well, you know, when I, I grew up in a small town and at a time when everybody played baseball and everybody wanted to play baseball, and 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 I went to my first game in 1946, so you know that's what 70 some years ago, uh, and and I've been avid baseball fan ever since. I, I wanted to play and I wasn't good enough to play. And, and I, I got acquainted with, with Gene Autry one time, and Gene told me that when he was a kid growing up, he wanted to play baseball, and he said he wasn't good enough to play, but the next best thing is if you can't play, just own the team. <laughs> so I followed his advice, and, and, but, but I've, I've been a baseball junkie all my life. I love the game, and, and I followed it avidly, and, and it, it, it's been great.